Good evening. I realize many of you have already seen uh, We Don't Need Permission, a proposal for homosexual emancipation, the proposal I've written. I'd like to read you the introduction so that uh, you might want to make a decision to pick up a copy for yourself. Um, the introduction is simply, question, why are we as adults requesting permission to marry? As far as I can tell, there is no disparity between heterosexuals and homosexual people physically. The same civil laws govern us. We have the same bills. We need provisions and clothing. We all take care of our children and pets, and we pay property and school taxes. However, we differ only in the method that the government taxes married couples. The way I understand it, we have one of two alternatives as homosexuals. One. The term of marriage makes heterosexuals uncomfortable. Therefore, we can call marriage something else. That way, we can gain the profit of government tax breaks. Two, we can quit paying taxes to the government. We have all heard this said, no taxation without representation. Take a good look around, my friends. It has not been that long since our last presidential election, so many of you will remember contributing your money and time to the Democratic Party, most of us, only to hear that they will not change the marriage laws. All we get from politicians anymore is a sympathetic tone, a concerned look, and the same previous story about how the House and Senate tie their hands. Well, we can cut right through that red tape by hiring a law firm for as little as $100 a piece to represent us against the government. There are about 300 million people in the United States. I have heard it said that 1% of the population is homosexual. I believe that's closer to 10%. We do not have a true statistic of this number because not everyone who is homosexual will state so. For the benefit of argument, we will say that 1% of the U.S. population is homosexual. This will cover the adults and exclude those not old enough to vote. Of about 300 million, say 1 million is homosexual. That would explain why our tax base is not enough anyway to invoke amendments to the Constitution. But $1 billion, I uh, actually was thinking 10% there instead of 1%, and the math came out a little fuzzy. Oops. Um, $1 billion and a good law firm might be enough to win us a case to remove our tax base from this government. I do not imagine finding a law firm to try the case of the century would be too difficult a task. Our lawyer could argue the point that Benjamin Franklin, signer of the original Constitution, had written much on the issue of no taxation without representation. Nowhere in the Constitution does it state that there must be a majority in order to form a union of our own. It will not come down to a vote between heterosexuals and homosexuals. We could draft our own constitution, beginning with, for example, we, the homosexuals of the United States of America, in order to form a perfect un federation, declare ourselves apart from the heterosexual state and its religiously ruled government to exercise our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and so on and so forth. We could be the new Amish, or Indian, American Indian. If you think about it, we've been around a lot longer and have suffered many persecutions. We have suffered lobotomies, loss of life, rape, experimentation in the Holocaust, and many of those things even recently. Parents and the law have institutionalized us. We have had our children seized and our pets poisoned. Our families rejected us and employers denied us jobs and promotions. Society calls us nasty names, to say the least and refuses us equity. The list of encroachments could fill volumes. There have been homosexuals who have re le relieved themselves from these hardships by either committing suicide or getting married, which is a form of happiness suicide. You might want to know what I have in mind for our tax base. We should start our own social security program. We could probably have health care across the board. We should start our, um, oh, excuse me, we would elect executives to sit on a board and act as watchdogs to oversee our funds. We will have investors and provide programs of our own voted on choosing. 
such as sweeping out homelessness in America and funding for families of gay children so kids never have to feel scared and alone, such was the case with me. I was living in an orphanage when I came to realize I was different. I was playing catch in 1968 and the knowledge came through my soul like an awakening. I was only eight years old, but I instinctive, instinctively knew that I couldn't tell anyone. Nothing in my environment or on television showed that my reality matched anyone else's. I thought I would live alone my whole life and I distanced myself from everybody. I was a lonely youngster and teenager. If there is one matter on which I can agree with President George Bush, it is a no child left behind concept. Other projects could include world issues as well. Our tax dollars could go to research of our choosing. AIDS research comes immediately to mind. I know our country leader, country's leaders feel that America does not have anything to gain from Africa, but we could help that floundering country receive aid. As for Social Security, there will not be any by the time we retire the way this government is wasting it. This is, will truly be the land of the free for us. Just think about it. No more battles with church and state. No more can politicians pit us against the heterosexuals for votes and money. And um, it would be interesting to see how politics fare when we remove one of the bargaining chips. Us. One school of thought out there says exposure to our lives will cause acceptance. I do not know about you, but I believe it is more important that we accept authority for our own livelihoods and build a people of support and unity. We should not have to live in a world where an eight-year-old child realizes that there's something diverse about her and is afraid to tell anybody. Nothing else in our lives will change, really. We will continue to live according to the laws of the states and the cities in which we reside, but we will not need their endorsement for marriage. When we die, our pensions and what we leave our w in our wills will go to our spouses. Likewise, likewise we will divide half of our combined assets and pay child support and alimony if we divorce. It is not that we are simulating the heterosexual lifestyle, but it is the honest way to live. The next section will cover a bit of research. I know I will be preaching to the choir, but we need to consider these items when proposing and considering a decision such as this. And then the next uh, chapters will uh, include homosexuals and the Declaration of Independence, um, where we fit into the Constitution of the United States, political aspects, justice, and um, case in point would be the personal, um, the personal and professional um, aspects of what I've gone through in the United States being a lesbian and uh, the reason why I, I wrote this proposal. Um, as far as helping other countries, uh, I believe with all my heart that we are all connected. And if we empower the less fortunate, um, we sustain our lives and our livelihoods in the future. And we can be a shining example of how the world can work. So basically, if, if you'd like to pick up a copy of we don't need permission or proposal for homosexuality, or homo, I'm sorry, for a proposal for homosexual emancipation. Uh, you can get it at Barnes & Noble, like I said, or uh, Amazon.com, Author House. So um, hopefully uh, some you all will pick it up and enjoy it. It will only be a couple hours of your time. Thank you very much. Come back and see me.